Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how four rotor rotary engines work. And this video was inspired by Rob Dom's current build. He's building the world's first all-wheel drive four rotor RX-7. Very cool project. If you haven't yet checked it out, I'd highly recommend going over to his channel. I'll include a link in the video description. Uh, but very cool build. He's got a lot of cool like geeky engineering stuff going into it that he kind of shows some of the details behind that's very fascinating to follow. But one of the things I was interested in is how does a four rotor differ from a two rotor? And so that's what we're going to be getting into in this video. So if you've watched some of my previous videos on rotary engines, you do have a good general idea of how they work. Just a quick refresher here. Here we have our rotary. We've got the housing right here and the rotor inside, which will be spinning around. You have the same four strokes like you do in a piston cylinder engine. Same basic cycle. You've got intake where you pull in that air. Then you're going to compress that air as this rotor presses that air down into a smaller pocket here where you've got your two spark plugs. Your spark plugs will ignite. You'll have your combustion cycle where you'll push that. That's, of course, uh, rotating this eccentric shaft right here, which is going to be sending power ultimately to your rear wheels uh, or front wheels or whatever wheels you're powering with the engine. And then you have your exhaust stroke right here uh, where you push out all of that uh, wasted air once you've, you know, used up all the air and fuel in there, the oxygen. So... How does, what's, you know, what's the difference between this and a two rotor? And my immediate thought was, you know, with a two rotor, what you have is you have the, the first rotor like this, Dorito, uh, triangle, whatever you want to call it like that. And then the one behind it, which is going to be the opposite of it, 180 degrees. So I thought, well, maybe for a four rotor, you just go up, down, up, down. Uh, but that is not why, what is done. And I'll explain why it's not done that way. Now, this is a very good design because it's balanced, uh, as you can see, axially. And then you also split up the power strokes. So that's what you want to do. With a four rotor design, uh, what you're going to actually have is it'll look similar for the first two, uh, up, then down, and then you're going to have the triangle on its side, and then you'll have that rotated 180 degrees. So if you stack each of these on top of each other, what you'll notice is it will still be balanced on that axis in the center about which it rotates. Um, however, uh, you're not going to have it looking like this, where it's just up, down, up, down. Instead, you've got these 90 degree angles in there. So why would you do this? Well, let's look at how the firing order is going to work with this. So your first one here, uh, it's basically finishing up the combustion phase. It's kind of like in this motion right here, uh, where we've got our triangle right there, our rotor right there. This one is 180 degrees from that. Um, so it's basically just getting started. Uh, it's a little bit into the combustion stroke. So you've just fired those spark plugs, it's rotated a bit, and you've got that combustion going. Your third one, uh, you have a significant amount of combustion occurring. It's a little bit after this. As you can see, if you take that and rotate it slightly, you're going to be at this step. And then our fourth one here, you can see, is just beginning the combustion phase. So your sparks have just ignited that air fuel mixture. It's basically right where this one is right here, uh, where it's 90 degrees, you know, facing uh, perpendicular to those spark plugs there. So if you look at this, you can see that the firing order, this one's first then this one, then this one, then this one. So the firing order, one, three, two, four. And, you know, why is that done? Why not just have it go up, down, up, down? Well, the real reason is your power delivery. And so if you look at the torque that's going to be supplied from each one of these power strokes, uh, if you're looking at a two-rotor engine, which we have drawn here in red, you're going to get that initial power stroke, and then you'll have the second rotor's power stroke. And, you know, there are going to be more power strokes than that because these are rotating and they have more uh, power strokes per rotation than a typical piston cylinder device. Uh, but for simplicity, we're looking here, it's going front, back, front, back uh, for that power stroke. So you can see that long pause in between. Now, if you were to do a four rotor like this, these two would have their power strokes occurring simultaneously, and these two rotors would have their power strokes occurring simultaneously. So what that would look like is what we have drawn here in this purple dotted line. So you'd have more power uh, for that brief moment, then you'd have that long pause, and then more power. Now this is an ideal because you want smooth power delivery. If you can do it, uh, all piston cylinder out engines out there, none of them will have, uh, you know, two cylinders firing at the same time. Even the Bugatti Veyron's W16, which has 16 cylinders, you split that up. V12 engines, same thing. You're not firing two cylinders at the same time. You're making sure that you have a very smooth power delivery. So what you do when you switch it to this up, down, and then side to side, 
is this, it's going to look like this. So here in blue is what your actual four rotor power del delivery is going to look like. And so it's going to be a much smoother power delivery. And that's what you want. That's what you'll do in all piston cylinder engines. And the same logic applies here for rotary engines. So just some of the advantages of using a rotary engine, um, like we've mentioned, if you stack these up on top of each other, it's balanced uh, rotationally, and you also have extremely smooth power delivery. The other cool thing about uh, these rotary engines is that you don't have reciprocating mass. And as a result of that, you can spin these engines up very high. Rob Don believes his rotary engine is going to be spinning at 10,000 RPM, uh, which is absolutely insane. So that's going to be really cool to see. You also have a very high power density. So these are the equivalent, uh, you know, they're, they're about 2.6 liter engines as far as how much displacement they actually have. Now, you know, it gets tricky when you're comparing that directly to a four stroke piston cylinder because you have more power strokes per rotation of the eccentric shaft, essentially the crankshaft for this engine. Uh, but you do what basically what this means is that you can get a ton of power in a very small package. So not a lot of weight and a lot of power, which is definitely ideal. Um, and if there's more information you'd like to see, you know, on how rotaries work, because there are certainly disadvantages to this design as well. I do have a good number of other videos, uh, so please feel free to check those out and also check out Rob Dom's videos on his RX-7 build. Thank you all for watching. Any questions or comments, you know what to do, leave them below.